welcome back students to the lecture 3 on elasticity let me give you a brief recap of our lecture 2 in lecture 2 we learned how to define poisson's ratio we defined it as lateral contractional strain to longitudinal extensional strain remember whenever there is an extension in one direction for example in x direction if there is an extension then we observe contraction in y and z directions so this is how we define poisson's ratio lateral contractional strain to longitudinal extensional strain then we learned how to express generalized hooke's law epsilon x epsilon y epsilon z are the various components of the resultant strain and then from the generalizer hooke's law we try to derive the relation between various elastic constants we derived the relation between various moduli of elasticity as e is equal to 9 gk by 3k plus g where e is Engs modulus, G rigidity modulus, K bulk modulus. And then we concluded our lecture 2 with the elastic behavior of a material under increasing load. In the sense we learned this stress strain diagram where we observed the various points like the proportionality limit elastic limit etc a wire passes through before it approaches the fracture point now let us try to understand the concept of bending of beams usually a beam is defined as a rod or a bar of uniform cross section whose length is large compared to other dimensions. So in the diagram, you see a beam. There are a number of layers. You can imagine the beam to be comprised of a number of layers called filaments. Now when I try to bend the beam, something like this. So the effect of bending extends the filaments of the beam in the upper half and compress the filaments in the lower half. So there, there must be one filament in between which neither extends nor compresses. Such a filament is known as neutral filament. So in this diagram, this neutral filament is indicated with red color. So all the filaments above neutral filament extend. And all the filaments below neutral filament, they compress. Now, in this example, let us try to understand the bending of a beam, which is horizontally clamped to a rigid end with the load attached to the free end, as shown in this figure. So, such an arrangement is also called a cantilever. So, let us consider a cross section PQ of the beam. Now, this load applied to the free end and the reaction force at this end, they constitute a couple and result in external bending movement the external bending movement causes the filaments above this neutral filament to extend and below to contract the tensile forces so developed will act parallel to various filaments and will increase with the distance of the filament from n so as I move away from N, the magnitude of these tensile forces increases. So remember, 
the uppermost layer experiences maximum tensile force. Now these tensile forces can be grouped into couples. For example, this force and this force, they constitute a couple as well. These two forces and again this force and this force also constitute a couple. Now these tensile forces grouped into couples which tend to turn PQ to RS about the breadth of the beam. The sum of the moments of all these couples must be equal to external bending moment. Now, the elasticity in the rod tends to oppose these couples. So the resting, restoring forces develop in the beam, resulting in internal bending moment. So the internal bending moment is the total moment of all the couples brought into play in a bent beam tending to resist the deformation caused in it by the bending couple. Remember, when the beam is in equilibrium, the external bending moment is equal to internal bending moment. Now, let us try to derive the bending moment of the beam. An expression for the bending moment. So let me consider a diagram like this, as you see. Let us consider a bent beam, A, B, E, F. Let C, D be the neutral filament. Let us say small r is the distance of the upper filament from the neutral filament. And then let capital R be the radius of curvature of the beam phi, the angle subtended by it at the center of curvature. Now, when there is no strain applied, the length of the filament is r phi. You know this distance as r and now re remember the neutral filament will neither extend nor compress. So there is no strain in the neutral filament. So when there is no strain, even the other filaments are of the length CD and that very length is being expressed as R phi. And then the length of the filament when strained is, say for example, let us consider the filament AB, a strained filament AB, which is at a distance of capital R plus small r then the length of the filament when strained is r plus r into phi. These are the simple geometrical exp expressions. We know that angle is always equal to arc length by radius. So arc length is equal to angle into radius. Therefore, the strain caused in the filament AB can be expressed like this. So strain, the longitudinal strain, as we defined previously, the change in length by original length. So R plus R into phi minus R phi is the change in length by original length R phi, which is nothing but equal to small r by capital R. Remember, the strain is proportional to the distance small r from the neutral axis. So now, because we understood the strain is equal to small r by capital R, let us try to express the modulus of elasticity. The Young's modulus E is equal to stress by strain or stress is equal to small r by capital R into capital E. Remember, 
capital E is Young's modulus, small r by capital R is the strain caused in the filament AB. So now let us try to express force because we know stress is equal to force by area. So force can now be expressed as stress small r by capital R into capital E into the area of cross section small a of the filament AB. Uh, so now this gives us the tensile force acting on the filament AB. So knowing this force, we can express the moment of force of the filament AB about CD. Moment of force is nothing but torque. Torque acting on the filament AB. Moment of a force is always defined as force into perpendicular distance. So now the force e into small r by capital R into A into distance from the filament, the neutral filament CD. Distance of the filament AB from the neutral filament CD, which is again small r. Remember, this moment of force can also be called as torque. Now, since the moment of force acting on the upper and lower half of the beam is same, so I can extend this equation to express the total moment of force. So, taking the summation. So, now the total moment of force is equal to sigma E into AR square by capital R or E by capital R sigma AR square. Now, the sigma AR square is again notated as Ig called geometrical moment of inertia. And then, now this is the very expression for the bending moment of the beam. We call this as the bending moment of the beam. So, E by R into Ig. Now with the expression of bending moment in hand, let us try to derive the expression for depression in cantilever. We already defined cantilever as a beam horizontally fixed at one end and loaded at the other end. Now let me consider one such cantilever with a load W applied at the free end. Now in this diagram, you are seeing the neutral axis of a cantilever, EF. EF is the neutral axis of one such cantilever. Now when the load W is applied, the end F is deflected to F dash. So this end F is deflected to F dash. So that now the neutral axis takes a new position E F dash. Let us consider a section PQ in the cantilever at a distance X from the fixed end. So from this is a fixed end. At a distance x, let us consider a small section PQ of length dx. So now the moment of force at this section due to the load W at the free end can now be expressed as W into L minus x. So moment of force is nothing but torque. So torque is force into perpendicular distance. So W into L minus X. So now, since the cantilever is in equilibrium, this moment of force is equal to restoring torque. So the expression for this restoring torque or the bending moment was already derived as E by R into IG in the previous section. So, 
W into L minus X is equal to EYR into IG. Let us call this as equation 1. So therefore, uh, now this section from the section PQ, which is the arc length, is equal to R d theta. So arc length is equal to radius into angle. We are calling that as dx. From this, r is equal to dx by d theta. So let us call this as equation 2. Now substituting 2 in equation 1, r is equal to dx by d theta in equation 1, we get w into l minus x is equal to e into ig into in place of r dx by d theta is substituted. The enlarged diagram of this section PQ is being shown in this figure for a better understanding. So now from this expression d theta can be expressed as w into l minus x by e into ig into dx. Now, let us draw the tangents at the point P and Q. So now the depression dy of this section PQ is dy is equal to L minus x into d theta. So this is the depression only of the section PQ. Now that's, that, that is expressed as L minus x into d theta. The same formula applies. So if this angle is d theta, even this angle is also equal to d theta. So again angle is equal to this distance by this distance from which I express dy is equal to L minus x into d theta. Therefore dy is equal to in place of d theta let me substitute w into l minus x by e i g into dx. So now dy is equal to w into l minus x whole square into dx by e i g. Therefore the total depression of the beam. Remember this is only the depression of the section PQ. Now I am extending this formula to the total length of the beam. So in order to get the total depression of the beam, we obviously go for integration. Y is equal to integral 0 to L, W into L minus X whole square by E i g into dx. So completing the integration, we are left with an equation for the depression in cantilever y is equal to w l cube by 3 e i g. So this is the expression for the depression of the cantilever represented as small y. So students, this is the end of our lecture 3. So as usual at the end of our lecture, we are used to answer some questions. So you should be in a position to answer what is the neutral filament in a beam? What is the role played by elasticity in a bending beam? What is bending moment? So how you derive this bending moment? The expression for bending moment? And finally, we concluded our lecture with the expression for depression in a cantilever. Thank you.